We got a lot to get into today. Where to begin? Crown Jewel? Did you guys watch Crown Jewel? Actually, it was pretty good. No? You didn't watch Crown Jewel? No. No. There was college football on, Brian. And yeah. frankly, I was still recovering. I was still recovering from, from watching what? Mike Tyson oh my God. do the commentary on Rampage for Orange Cassidy and Katsuyori Shibata. That was enough pro wrestling for me to sit through all of Saturday and go, you know what? I'm not going to watch any other show until Sunday. And I did not do that, Brian, until Sunday when I watched Stardom and New Japan so I could record the Big Audio Nightmare available for listeners everywhere for free wherever you get your podcasts with my co-host Adam Summers, hosted here at F4WOnline.com. Well, I watched the show as part of my job here, so I'll tell you all about it here today. We had Lesnar beating Bobby Lashley. When uh, Lashley had him in the hurt lock, Lesnar pushed off, pinned him, and then Bobby Lashley put him back in that hurt lock afterwards and left him for dead. So it appears Bobby Lashley is going to be turning heel, which actually, finally, we could have somebody actually cut a promo blaming the fans, and they will be absolutely justified. Because, man, when Lesnar showed up and beat the hell out of poor Bobby Lashley, and everybody cheered and... Wanted him killed. That was horrible, those fans did to Bobby Lashley. So that's also going to probably set up another match. We had Damage Control regaining the women's tag team titles. They lead, uh, beat Alexa Bliss and Asuka to win the titles. There was interference in pretty much every single solitary match on this show, for those of you that are a big fan of that. And uh, this one was Nikki Cross running in to cost the baby faces the match. So I don't know if she's going to be part of damage control or what the deal is, but she cost them the match. Match was, uh, there was actually, in looking at this match, I would say there were no bad matches, including Braun Strowman and Omos. Now, was Braun Strowman and Omos a five star match? Is this idiot Braun Strowman claimed on Twitter? Of course not. But it was not in the negative stars. I could tell you that much. Drew McIntyre, Karrion Cross, uh, steel cage match. Uh, wrestling was good. Drew McIntyre went to escape. Scarlet sprayed stuff in his face. And then she locked the door. And so, because the door was locked, Drew McIntyre decided he was going to climb over. And then Scarlet tried to unlock the door so that Karrion Cross could come out. But she couldn't unlock it fast enough, and so he didn't make it, and Drew McIntyre won. So Drew McIntyre got the big win there. Judgment Day versus the OC. Ballard, Damien Priest, and Rey Mysterio versus AJ, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. As has been the case of late, Rhea Ripley interfered to cost the OC. And finally, Michael Cole lost his mind and he screamed, and I quote, somebody needs to kick her ass. So I would presume that tonight on Raw, whoever that is going to be is going to show up to kick Rhea Ripley's ass. And I presume it is either Mia Yim or Raquel. Raquel was the woman they were using on the house shows, but Mia Yim is expected to be back pretty much at any time, and so it could end up being Mia Yim. We shall find out. Or it could be somebody else. Who knows? Braun Strowman and Omos. It's better than I expected. I would not say it was as good as uh, as Filthy Tom said it was, because he was texting me all morning telling me that Omos was now downright good. <laughs> I would not quite go that far. But uh, I did not expect that Braun Strowman would be such a good babyface in peril. Braun Strowman was like, dude... I, he's an idiot, okay? And he said some stupid stuff on, on Twitter. But, uh, you know, he was a giant Rey Mysterio during this match. Not in terms of high-flying, but he'd fire up and then he'd get run over by this giant. And he actually did a real good job in this match. And Omos probably was the best I've ever seen Omos. And so if ever there was a match that completely overachieved, it was Braun Strowman and Omos. And finally, Braun grabs this bloke, and he power slams him, and he just 
pinned him. One, two, three. No interference, nothing. A clean pin. Braun Strowman beat Omas. So better than I expected, I'll say that much. We had the Usos beating the Brawling Brutes. You know, whatever you want to say about the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I mean, these fans, they wanted Sami Zayn on this show. They were begging for Sami Zayn. There were We Want Sami Chance at, like, the press conference. They were We Want Sami Chance during this match right here. But there was no Sami Zayn. But the Usos ended up getting the win here. The story is that Jey Uso, and this was pretty weird. So Jey Uso got his uh, his wrist stomped on the ring steps by the Brawling Brutes. And they said it was revenge for what the Usos had done. Actually, it was Sami Zayn and, uh, and the Usos had done to Sheamus. But I'm watching the match, and it's actually Jimmy that's holding his wrist and selling his wrist the entire time. Then they tell us that Jay has a broken wrist, most likely. He needs an MRI today. And, uh, I mean, he was doing everything in this match. He's doing his big splash. He's doing the 1D off the middle rope. So, color me skeptical. I mean, he may have a broken wrist, but I think this might be storyline leading to whatever they're doing on SmackDown with the Usos and uh, in the uh, uh, New Day, because New Day is, they're about to have their record broken by the Usos. So this may end up being an elaborate storyline. We shall find out. Uh, they did a match on SmackDown where um, Shayna Baszler, when the match was over, she gave Natty this big uh, knee to the face, and Natty comes up, and she's bleeding all over. They give her the towel, and now she's had nasal surgery. And uh, I don't buy that one for a second. That looked like 100% storyline, uh, knee to the face, do the injury angle, do the fake blood, leading to uh, Natty, I'm sure, needed nasal surgery, and so this was a cover for it. So uh, I'm skeptical about some of these injuries of late in uh, in WWE, but perhaps his wrist is really broken. I guess we'll... Uh, We'll find out. Honestly, if his wrist is really broken, I mean, you know, Britt uh, Brit Baker had a broken wrist that she worked on for months, and, uh, you know, others have worked on, on injuries. So if they do a match and he's not in the match, I actually think it's storyline. If he has his wrist all in a cast and he works, I would presume it's legitimate. But I guess we'll find out. Look at you with the double reverse psychology there and whatnot. You know, and you chided Britt Baker for working on that broken wrist. It's the way it's never going to get better. And what you have right there, if it's broken or if it's not broken, you have an excuse to get Solo Sokoa into the mix and you can have the free birds rules on the uh, on the story. So if you wanted to do that, you could because to get the brawling brutes the same way with Rich Allen there as Solo Sokoa, his kind of generational rival in that mix right there. So that would be a great way to put Sokoa into the mix. We had uh, Bianca Belair and Bailey last woman standing match, which was a good match, although the finish was wacky, as uh, Bailey got sandwiched in a ladder, and then the ladder was slid under the top turnbuckle, and then she had to sell it like she couldn't get out. She tried hard to pretend like she couldn't get out. But overall, it was a uh, good match. Bianca retains the title. And then in, uh, I'm not making this up, best match on the show, Roman Reigns and Logan Paul, they had a great main event. And uh, Logan Paul, he's one of those guys where you can tell him to do any move and he can pull it off. And Roman Reigns was absolutely unbelievable in this match, playing the guy who figured... This bloke's had three matches. There's no way he's going to be competitive. Then it turns out he's not only competitive, but he almost wins. And Roman's reaction to him... Roman is practically crying after the match that he got out by the skin of his teeth. He's looking at his belts. Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Uh, actually, actually, yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Put him black and white, Jared. Make him look as old and gray as pot. There we go. Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. This is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. 
Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> well, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin Man. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.